What's up, everyone? It's me, Asia O'Hara, from season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race. I am so excited here to do my makeup tutorial. I'm looking forward to sharing some of my tips and tricks. This look I call Tangerine Dream. You might remember it from the good twin, evil twin runway. Watch me go from this to this. I like to wear a like little wig cap. Um, I don't know, it feels, makes me feel like I'm holding all my hair back. I like to prep my skin with just a little bit of something for oil control, um, and it just helps balance out my skin all over my face, and just kind of helps with a smooth slate for everything, so I don't have, you know, oily bits and dry bits and things of that nature. And then I go on top of that with a pore filler and some moisture, um, some moisture in it, um, to kind of add the moisture back into my skin and just get a nice, smooth palette. Of course, I'm going to block my brows um, with just a regular glue stick. I start, of course, in the center. And I do several layers, so I do that and I'm going to blow dry. It's important to do it on a cool setting and not talk while you're blow drying. So I'm just gonna do like um, maybe two more layers of that just depending on um, what you feel like you need. I have covered my brows. What I do is I just lightly dust over them with just a tiny little bit of powder just to make sure that it's set. As you can tell, I already have my contacts in. I like to put my contacts in before I start my makeup to give my eyes time to rest. I'm just going to hydrate my lips because my lips get dry for some reason when I'm doing my face. Now, we are going to go ahead and move on to our foundation. I just use a regular full coverage stick foundation. What I do is I take my dark foundation and I go on my jawline, most of my neck, across my top lip, and around the perimeter of my face. I like this type of brush for foundation. I do wash mine, but I do, I'm not gonna lie, I like when it is just full of foundation because it makes the blending and smoothing process so much easier. So now I'm gonna take my lighter foundation, same type of foundation, just a different color. First, over my brows, in the same direction that I did my glue stick. And then I do my forehead, my nose, my cheeks, and basically everywhere where I didn't put the dark foundation. I now will take um, just a regular beauty blender. My nose is the only place because I want to get in the crevices of my nose is the only place I actually kind of rub. Everywhere else, I just blot. I start to bring it down and blend it into my darker foundation. And then I'll do the same thing going around the perimeter of my forehead. I like to do this, my contour with a cream color as opposed to a foundation because I feel like they blend um, a little bit easier than foundations. So I'm going to go here in the back and pull that down. I don't um, like to put too much dark color too far in because I, I don't like for my face to look chopped and I want um, to be able to kind of blend it back into the darkness. And I'm starting kind of in the center of my ear and coming down into the natural kind of hollow of my face. And then after that, I'm just going to kind of blend that up with circular motions just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the tiniest little bit, kind of what's left on my brush, and I'm gonna break my face right here and just blend that here just a tiny little bit. And I like to have a break here because it makes my jaw not look so huge and manly. Depth wise, it makes my face look um, shallower. Okay, now I'm going to take a my darker powder and I use two completely different powder puffs. Um, one for dark and one for light, uh, just so it stays Clean. And I'm gonna go all through the dark areas where my contour is and where just my regular foundation color is. I like to use 
pigmented powders because I just like to be able to look at the powder and say, okay, that's close to the color that I want that part of my face to be. Instead of doing a foundation and then putting a translucent powder on it and then not knowing what that mixture is going to give me. And then I'm also going to go around the perimeter where I put the dark powder. So I'm gonna take my lighter powder and I'm now going to go over the other places and I will save my chin for last. So you're basically just going over everything that does not already have powder. And it's okay to pull the powder out onto the darker part because that just kind of helps with the blending anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna do that part of my chin that I left earlier. And I'll just let that sit there and we'll blend it later. That part of my face looks cooler than the rest of it. And it's because I put a, a light powder onto a dark foundation. I'm going to take, for me, kind of a peachy orange color and it's going to go around every part of my face where the light meets the dark. And it just helps with the transitions later. So I'm just going around all of that with a nice orangey peach color. Now that I'm done with that part of my cheek, what I'm gonna do is what we call cutting our cheek. I like to use my darker powder um, because I find it's a little more natural. And I'm going to go from the center of my ear and I'm going to carve this out. I'm making my jaw not look so long. We don't wanna look like, you know, John Cena. We wanna look like Holly Berry, honey. And then just take a little bit off of here as well so your jaw doesn't look thick this way. You want to contour your nose up close to the bridge of your nose and not down here, because down here is making your nose look wider. So I'm going to start in the corner of my eye, and this is a soft brown color, and I'm gonna just pull that down. To here. I'll blend it right into where my actual natural brow bone is. I'm going to take a nude colored pencil and I'm going to go down the bridge of my nose with a thin line and I'm going to stop and I'm going to do a dot. A light colored shimmery shadow and I will go over the pencil. So now the face is done for the most part and we're going to move on to the eyes. Basically just white cream. And I'm going to go over my lid a little bit higher than where I want my actual lid to be. A lot of people use shimmery eyeshadows. I personally like to stay a little matte. And what I do is I pat it on first to make sure everything's covered. And then I go back and kind of blend it out. Because this is Tangerine Dream, I'm going to take a bright orange blush that it actually is. I'm just gonna start to go around the edge of this. Even when I'm not doing this particular look, I put a, a peachy or a lighter kind of orangey pink color here in my crease area just to have something to lay my other dark colors down on. I like to go in my crease with a pencil on the bottom edge of that to get a nice defined line. So I take just a regular black liquid liner. I start from the corner of my actual eye and I go upward, okay? And from here, I start from here feeling, filling that space in. So keep your eye kind of squinted and closed. And you're gonna just fill all of that in. And as we get to the center of the eye, or the corner of the eye, it comes to a very nice finished line. See, a triangle. Ta-da! Okay, and I've got that pretty much done for now, and because I'm impatient and I wanna make sure it's not going to fold, I blow dry this portion.
So now we're going to do brows. I use a pencil, um, a lip pencil. So I start by just sketching out my brow and I start from where I want my brow to begin, which is basically the corner of my eye. Go upward and I'm basically drawing the bottom part of my brow. I like a nice high quality pencil because I find they're smoother. So I'm basically sketching the bottom portion of my brow and as you can see, they're not completely perfect or even. Now I'm going to draw the top portion and I keep them wide here and then here I just kind of angle down into my tail. <laughs> into my tail, gross. And then I begin to fill this in. And I do leave it a little sparse right there and I'm just going over this entire brow with orange eyeshadow. And this sets the pencil um, and it also just gives you an opportunity to get the color closer to what you want. So you can always correct and fix and adjust your brows with the negative space around them. So I am going to take the same white cream that I put on my lid. I'm going to carve underneath my brow to give that a clean line. And to make sure the shape is right. I'm going to set that with a white shadow. And I kind of pop that in there first and then blend it out. And I'm gonna use the peach color that I used at the very beginning um, on my cheeks, our base color. And I'm just going to ever so slightly kind of blend these corners here out. We're gonna use that same pencil to highlight the top of our brow. And this is another time where you can adjust the shape of your brow. And I'm gonna just kind of flick into the beginnings of my brow. This is where I do my actual highlight. I'm going to buff right in the center of that. Just a little bit and up and out. And this is a pressed highlight powder, just a pressed golden highlight powder that I'd like to use set that onto my cheek area. After I've done my eyes, I kind of want to start to see exactly how highlighted or contoured I need to be. So I'm going to take that peachy color again, lightly go underneath my brow highlight. I'm going to take a white pencil and do the inside corners of my eye. Um, because I want my eye to look a little open. So I'm gonna go just about here to where the iris of my eye begins with a black pencil. So I'm gonna actually start just before the white line stops and do the bottom of my eye and I'm doing my waterline and underneath my eye. I'm gonna take our trusty liquid liner and I'm just going to make sure that this line is nice and slick and I'm actually kind of going under my line. We're gonna take our trusty fail safe peach color and we're gonna put just a tiny little bit in the corners. You don't wanna go down here, you wanna go out here where your crease naturally, or where your lid naturally would meet your brow. And you just wanna soften that just a little bit. So on to lashes. For me, I like this part of my eye to be slick and not open as much. So I don't wear um, bottom lashes a whole lot. And with lashes, I stack a bunch. Two pair of 301s, one pair of 199s, a 101, and then some other kind of weird lash that I don't actually know what it is on the top. Yes, I am one of the girls that uses weave bonding glue for lashes. Um, I just find it works better. It probably is not safe for your eyes, so don't say Asia said to put this on your eye when you your eye fall apart, but. I like for my lashes to defy gravity. So I put glue on the rim of the lash where you normally do, and on the outside, I start to angle the glue up onto the top of the lash. That way it can fold up that way. Somewhat generous, but somewhat thin line of glue and I make sure that's kind of tacky and I place it there 
and then I angle it up. And then once I get it where I think I want it, we grab our blow dryer. A lot of people, I th think that you have to put your lash on your actual eye, honey, no, it's drag. So it's nowhere near my eye, except for right here in the center. And because I want this one to be lifted like this one is, I'm going to take glue and I'm just gonna kind of put it on the top. And you can kind of wedge it down under the lash a little bit below the lash as well and we're gonna blow dry it up. Bam! What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of a dark burgundy and I'm gonna bridge that gap and blend that between our black and our white. And it's a little bit of a dark burgundy and a little bit of orange. I am just now doing my blush. A lot of people do it earlier. I like to do it kind of towards the end because I, that's the last kind of piece to bridge everything together and I wanna make sure it's right. Some of our trusty peach color and I'm gonna go along my entire cheek area as well as around my forehead. Then I'm going to take a little bit of orange and pop that right on the apples of my cheek. Now what we're gonna do is take um, a, um, kind of a clean blending brush and all of this powder that we let sit there, we're gonna kind of buff that off just a little bit, okay? And same thing with our chin. Time for lips. A orangey red liner. I like to use my natural lip shape. Now I'm gonna take an actual orange pencil and fill uh, some of my lip space in. I like a matte lipstick regardless of if I'm gonna put gloss on top of it or not. Um, I feel like the color pigmentation and the payoff is just a lot better. If it's color that you want, I definitely definitely recommend sticking with matte. Um, if you want that glossy, dreamy look, go ahead and pop gloss, but you see you will lose a little bit of the color payoff. So that's that. And there we are, gloss. Okay, last thing I do, I take a huge brush. As you start to really develop your makeup, you will end up, you will find naturally, you will end up with a brush that is just like your blending brush that you don't really put color or powder on. It just kind of has a little bit of your soul on it. And you take that and just kind of just smooth and blend and buff wherever you feel like you might need it. And to finish everything off, I like to use a setting spray or some kind of like bar barrier spray or non-move spray um, just to make sure things are gonna stay great. So I stay far back and I just... So now I've done my face, I'm gonna put on a piece of hair and I'll be right back. Boom, what do you think? It's my final look, the Tangerine Dream. Hope you guys like it. This is from the Good Twin, Evil Twin Runway. I have absolutely had the time of my life sitting here with you guys. If you wanna see more of me, more of my looks, follow me on Instagram, Asia O'Hara. I. I'm looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. And if you wanna see me do some different looks or different things, let me know, I'll be happy to do it. I love you guys and thank you, bye! Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead, I support you.